uh, thanks for you know taking your time and joining in this you know one of the kind of uh, interesting session over here so um, let me introduce myself uh, i am dr manish shankar i'm the product manager and application scientist from prema life sciences uh, i am taking care of this particular you know product which we are going to discuss more about it um, so before going into the presentation i'll just you know uh, find out introduce you what premas is and how premas has been in this uh, you know field for a very long time so we premas is an you know kind of uh, one kind of uh, different uh, distributor or you can say channel partner for many kind of high tech uh, technologies we are here from 2011 onwards and we are located in delhi and we have separate offices in uh, bangalore and we have various uh, field application scientists fscs and uh, sales person across the india and we cater different kind of sectors right from biotechnology pharmaceutical companies hospitals and each and every uh, kind of research sectors uh, we cater with our technologies that we provide so we have almost 200 kind of in you know installations across the country with a different kind of technologies that we have so we provide lot of uh, support and installation and you know research assistant in many kind of technologies so you can see these are all uh, different uh, partners that we cater in india right from illumina tenax uh, fluidam agilent technologies and recently we have signed with genscript for this covid uh, related investigations so we are the elect partner for uh, illumina for a very long time and uh, we are we were you know did excellent businesses across the uh, country with the different products and hopefully we will do some magic with uh, genscript this year so we found out during the covid situation there are a lot of uh, you know serological investigations were going upon and a lot of rt pcr assays were going upon but we identified a very unique product from genscript which we found will be very more suitable for uh, the covid related investigations in both zero surveillance plasma therapy and also the currently the uh, post covid vaccine post vaccination surveillance so we signed up with genscript for uh, serology assays uh, last year around june july and still we are sticking together so coming to the main you know topic of discussion uh, for the post uh, zero surveillance uh, activity for after the post vaccination so everyone still have the doubt uh, whether after vaccination uh, am i you know my immunity is good or whatever it is so there are a lot of talks going upon across india and also globe uh, after this vaccination or who all need to be vaccinated whether someone has infected pre infected after the antibody level raises up whether they do need have vaccination or not still lot of questions coming up among the masses and also there are no strict proper guidelines yet uh, to do or monitor the immunity level of any vaccination that has been given so to answer all those questions we arrange this uh, unique webinar or you can say a kind of educational uh, symposium to know more about you know how uh neutralizing antibodies are important and how it is different from other antibodies in a human system and in this webinar what we will learn is the importance of neutralizing antibody in a covid-19 management and the feature of this novel uh, cpas technology in screening neutralizing antibodies and the differences between the cpas technology and the other traditional or commercial uh, igg or igm assays and how important is a post vaccination survey is important in india with the kind of you know, different vaccine companies that have been deployed in india so we have uh, experts from genscript and from the clinical sector uh, we have uh, dr yang fang li unfortunately professor uh, li fang wang is sick uh, so he was unable to be here with us and he has sent this apologies to us all so dr lin fa yang fang will be taking care of his presentation and she will you know go through the cpas technology and how important it is 
and uh, Dr. Shalab Malik, he is from uh, Dr. Lalpat Lab. He is the head of uh, microbiology and serology department. And uh, Dr. Lalpat, we collaborated with them because they were the first one to take up uh, the CPAS and for detecting neutralizing antibody in their population. So without further ado, uh, I'll invite uh, Dr. Yang Fang Li to you know, deliver her presentation. So in her presentation, what we will know about is the importance of neutralizing antibody. What are, first of all, neutralizing antibody and how it is different from the binding antibodies. And she will go through the CPAS technology, how unique it is and how different it is. And she will also compare with the other IgG assays and how different the CPAS it is. So Yang Fang, the stage is yours. Thank you so much, Dr. Mani, for the wonderful introduction. Let me just share my screen. Let me know when it works. Hi. Yeah, for uh, the participants, uh, yeah, sorry. For the participants, uh, you can hold your questions or you can type your questions in the question and answer session so that all the questions will be answered at the end of our session. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Yang Fang. Please go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Mani, uh, for the wonderful introduction. And I'm sure that Primarchs have done a lot of fantastic jobs over the last year uh, to promote the use of CPARS and also for various of applications. Uh, so today my talk will be mainly focused on the past um, post-vaccination surveillance, a need for neutralizing antibody test. Uh, as Dr. Manny has mentioned, I do apologize on behalf of Prof. Uh, Wan Lin Fa, uh, who is actually, uh, I'm sure that um, due to an uh, emergency, uh, medical emergency, he will not be able to join us today. Uh, but for a next you know, time discussion and uh, symposium, I'm sure that we will have the luxury of inviting Prof. Wan Fa uh, to talk with us about this wonderful invention. You know, it's really a baby that Prof. Wan has incubated and so far it has been receiving so much of uh, recognition from uh, around the globe. So my name is Yan Fong and I will be working with you for the next uh, the 20 minutes. Agenda for my talk, right? I mainly focus on uh, the SVNG technology. Uh, SVNG stands for the surrogate virus neutralization test, and also uh, last to introduce you what are the IVD kits have been, you know, mature from the SVNG technology, which has been trademarked as CPARS. So these are the uh, current available technologies for COVID nineteen, right? So basically, as you can see, uh, in the year of twenty twenty. Uh, the technology was mainly around the viral material detection. So for this, uh, it's really to uh, use qRT-PCR or even anti a rapid antigen test technology uh, to determine if someone is infected uh, by the uh, detecting the presence of uh, the viral material. And uh, for post-infection, uh, especially uh, from the year of 2021, when uh, mass vaccination has been very popular and rolled out by many countries, right? So serology testing has been uh, more and more popular. Uh, among the serology testings, there are two uh, areas of, uh, of expertise. One is actually the traditional technology, which is the IgG, IgM, ELISA. Uh, this method is to detect the binding antibodies, right? So basically, uh, binding antibodies include IgG, IgM, IgA, et cetera, that is induced by the immune response uh, to the exposure of the virus. On the other hand, right, as I will also highlight the significance of the neutralization test, this neutralization test is to detect only the neutralizing antibodies, which I uh, brief as NAPs, right? NABs are actually a type of functional antibody uh, that is also, you know, an indication of uh, one's immunity to certain uh, pathogens. So this is to detect the neutralizing antibodies. And these are the antibodies that are functional and can block the virus to invade the cells. Significance of measuring neutralizing antibodies, right, the NABs. So I just listed three um, of the main pillars here, there are many other reasons why we are actually measuring neutralizing antibodies. But number one is really indicating uh, as a key biomarker in the vaccine efficacy and vaccine research, right? Um, 
according to the guidelines from the development and licensure of vaccines to prevent COVID-19, as you can see, there are three arms of immunity that one will be interested. Number one will be T cells. Number two will be humoral response that is talking about the binding antibodies. But most, like, uh, most importantly, one also have to identify the functional immune response. So that is really about the neutralizing antibodies, NADs. Why NADs are so important, not only in the context of vaccine, right? but also in the context of convalescent plasma therapy. So according again to the FDA guidelines, uh, one will have to screen the donor or even recipient eligibility to receive convalescent plasma treatment, right? According to FDA guidelines, the neutralizing antibody title of 1 in 160 is actually recommended as a high title to be saving some other people's life, right? So as you imagine, when we are undergoing the vaccine treatments, we may also want to see ourselves having a strong uh, neutralizing antibody immune response, at least one in 160, so that we actually will feel safe internally, right? So this is really the biomarker, the FDA guideline to indicate what uh, and who should be eligible to donate their um, blood and plasma to save other people's life. Lastly, but not least, as you can see, many of the therapy options are best around the neutralizing antibodies. So two examples that I wanted to highlight here, one from Eli Lilly, one from Regeneral. So basically, the neutralizing antibody have been proven and uh, you know, approved by FDA to save uh, and treatment of the recently diagnosed COVID-19 patients. So I think with these three main pillars, I just wanted to highlight it is important to measure neutralizing antibodies post-infection or post-vaccination. And this is to show you a bit more about the background of you know, our innovation. So as you can see, this is the interaction between the live virus and the cells right internally in our immune system. And SARS-CoV-2 virus may make use of the uh, RBD uh, domain on the spike protein uh, to bind to the receptor of SE2. And through this binding, the virus will be internalized. However, the interaction can be blocked with a neutralizing antibody, right? So once there is a presence of NAB, the virus RBD domain will not be able to bind to the SE2 receptor. And then your virus cannot be internalized and cannot replicate, right? So basically that stops the life cycle of this virus uh, from replicating internally. So we make use of this magic interaction and we develop this blocking ELISA methodology where we actually coat the SE2 receptor on the plate. And also in the um, solution, we add the HRP conjugator RPD. So in the absence of neutralizing antibody, you will see a lot of more signals. And in the presence of neutralizing antibodies, the binding between RBD versus ACE2 can be blocked. And then you can indicate the uh, amount of neutralizing antibodies that you can detect. A very simple uh, technology, but it's really like uh, only after 30 years, Prof. Wang has been working with viruses, different types of viruses. And uh, with that solid foundation and many years of experience in the gold standard of live virus neutralization tests, I think uh, that's a grand invention that Prof. Wang has brought to uh, the world. And why is the SVNT you know, creating a new paradigm for uh, NAD detection? Traditionally, FDA can never approve a single test for neutralization. And as you can see, many of Head B and other HIV neutralization tests will have to use a proxy. And that proxy are normally in the format of IgG or IgM binding antibody test. Because the viral neutralization tests making use of live virus and live cell culture is just too much of a noise. And there are so many different you know, disadvantages to this technology. The only um, beauty about it is really is the only gold standard. However, it requires strict safety um, control, takes multiple days, right? Require high level expertise, postdoc, senior researchers to read the results. It's very expensive and not going to be scalable. 
And as uh, you can see, recently WHO has also reported between lab, uh, the live virus ASA, there are huge differences. So it's very hard to actually compare the results between labs because of the protocol or some of the viral cell culture material differences. On the other hand, right, and Dr. Lau's past lab actually bring to the audience the SARS uh, sur surrogate to virus neutralization test, which is in the format of 96 well ELISA. And it can be done with, you know, a, a BSL level two lab. It can be fast, automatable, uh, can be done with high throughput and very much consistent. And it goes with a standard protocol, right? So this really allows global harmonization and between laboratory and between country, region, uh, you know, consistency. That's very important given that we actually have many different platforms of vaccines and it's really critical to have that one single platform to evaluate the effectiveness of different uh, platforms of vaccines. So as uh, Dr. Mani mentioned, uh, we really wanted to highlight the difference between the current technology, which is many IgG or IgM, the binding antibody test, and also the uh, SVNT as the neutralization antibody test. So as you can see on the left, the IgG IgM antibody test is only testing for binding antibodies, right? It does not indicate if there is this significant amount of binding antibodies, would that also mean that the neutralizing function is already detected? No, there are so much of differences individually and also uh, between the IgG, IgM and different isotypes versus the percentage of them belonging to neutralization antibody requires secondary antibody and it can, you know, oftentimes it's species isotype dependent so that you are not able to have one single assay to capture all the different isotypes and different species, right? So in the context for SVNT, we can test only the neutralizing antibodies. We confirm the function of neutralization does not require any secondary antibodies, isotype and species independent. So these are many functionals um, that actually the traditional IgG, IgM test cannot offer. And that's why also we are receiving a lot of more traction, especially under the context of vaccine application. So a bit more background, right? When you look at the virus, different particles, you have IRF, you have spike protein, membrane protein, nuclear capsid protein. Your T cell immune response can be recognizing many of these subunits of proteins. Uh, on, in the context of binding antibodies, it's more specific for spike and also NP protein. However, among those binding antibodies, neutralizing antibodies are very specific for the spike-like protein. And as you can see, right, why binding antibodies does not equal to neutralizing antibodies, we have done an experiment created uh, in-house four different antibodies, as you can see listed here. And if you look at the binding capacity, all four of them are very strong binders. However, if you wanted to evaluate the functionality, right, only two of these four antibodies and not, may not be the highest binders, these two are neutralizing. And the highest binders actually are not neutralizing at all. So it's really uh, the binding antibody and neutralizing antibodies are different and you cannot use binding antibody to amplify the signal and you know, approximate how much neutralizing antibody are among these four, right? So just bring home message is very critical. Uh, binding antibodies are not equal to neutralizing antibodies. And I'm going to share with you much more information about the differences between these different species of antibodies. So as you can see, this is a published uh, literature. As you can see, the um, study actually, you know, look at the association between SARS-CoV-2 neutralizing antibodies and uh, commercial serological assays, right? So in those assays, they picked up Roche, Abbott, and Euroimmune, and look at the correlation between these three versus the neutralizing titers. And you can see the correlation was actually as low as 0 0.29 up to 0.47, right? So this is not really significant high. And as you can see our internal data, when we actually uh, sampled 500 individuals and also test for total S1 binding antibodies versus our CPAS SVNT technology, 
and you can see the concordance level is not very strong. And on the below, we actually also compare our uh, SVNT versus the PRNT live virus assay. And guess what? So we actually achieve a 0 0.95 R square as a correlation. So this um, slides really give you the take home message that uh, by doing only the binding antibody assay to look for IgG or even total antibodies, binding antibodies, you will not always have a very high concordance level to how much neutralizing function these binding antibodies have. Not only the amount does not correlate well, but also the profiles of you know, the dynamic changes over time may not always be the same. As we show here in this nature paper, right, the IgG was found to be more or uh, less stable. However, neutralizing antibodies are actually all reducing. So we just wanted to highlight not only the amount may not be uh, you know, uh, in the same level, but the kinetics of change right, over time between the binding antibodies and neutralizing antibodies may also be different. So you may be able to see a different many dynamics between the binding antibodies and the neutralizing antibodies. And then it becomes another question, how do you ensure that you will have that kind of uh, immunity and ensure you are protected, right? So in this uh, study, uh, which is published by the uh, Lancet Micro Journal, um, a total of 160 individuals were followed. And guess what, right? Not only the general profiles, you know, the mean of the, um, the binding versus neutralizing are different, but even within the cohort, you may be able to see different subgroup of individuals. Some of them will never have a binding, you know, the, the neutralizing antibody induction. And among those major three clusters, well, they started with positive neutralizing antibodies. The speed of waning are still different, right? If you are in this rapid vanning group and imagine after three months, your mean, if you are actually among this uh, bottom, you know, few individuals, you already negative for neutralizing antibodies. And it's very critical for you to understand whether, you know, three months later, your neutralizing antibodies are present or not present, right? Because you can't hold a immunity passport by, you know, having a neutralizing antibodies on day one and imagine you will have it forever. It does not uh, you know, work like that. And it's, it's best to uh, monitor the neutralizing antibodies over a period of time and understand how your neutralizing antibody immune response are like. And you know, uh, it will be nice for us to see more and more people who after vaccine can have a, a strong neutralizing antibodies, you know, uh, as those people who are sitting in the persistent group. But some of a small percentage of individuals are also very odd. Well, their neutralizing antibodies are still climbing even after six months of uh, infection. So I think these are data based on infection, um, you know, uh, experiences. But uh, in the meantime, we are also collecting more uh, data uh, to look at post vaccination. Uh, what are the neutralizing antibody profile and when and the longevity of antibody look like, right? So it's really critical for you to have that understanding uh, for yourself, right? So that you practice safe distance, practice all these you know, necessary uh, procedures to stay um, safe and sound for yourself and also for the family. So our SVNT technology is actually being much uh, you know, appreciated uh, and adopted in many of the studies. Uh, I'm sharing these two examples, and um, there are many more that I haven't captured, which are already in the public domain, and a lot more, right, uh, which many of the studies are ongoing and still uh, remain confidential. So the SVNT was actually uh, used as a neutralizing antibody biomarker in these two studies. As you can see, right, in the context of Pfizer vaccine, uh, a total of 69 individuals were being monitored. And you can see that seven individuals out of the 69 actually did not have a positive uh, SVNG uh, results. Given the Pfizer vaccine is actually achieving almost 95% of protection, right? If in your context of having a, a different uh, vaccine platform, 
the evaluation of uh, neutralizing antibody profile may still be different. So in the right is a US study, right, which actually uh, showcase, you know, seven individuals who are actually taking uh, Pfizer's or Moderna vaccine, and they are also tracking the, uh, you know, the presence of neutralizing antibodies over different times post vaccination. So many more studies are being, uh, you know, uh, designed and ongoing, and more and more will be definitely uh, revealed for your uh, information uh, when the data are becoming publicly available. So can neutralizing antibody testing predict protective uh, immunity? So it's not we are you know, saying so only, right? Johns Hopkins University uh, published in the National Strategy for Serology Report has uh, indicated that neutralization assay are the gold standard for determining if somebody has effective antibodies and also protective immunity. Uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci, he is the chief medical advisor to the US president, indicates also neutralizing antibodies are the gold standard for protective immunity. And not only KOLs are so in saying so, right? We also have seen many publications and you know, news release that uh, a good neutralization antibody level can be associated with the protection. And what you can see on the left publication is that you know, uh, a total of uh, six individuals actually you know, uh, had a positive binding antibody. And when there was a reinfection on this uh, shipping vessel, unfortunately, uh, it was on the sea, and uh, there was a high uh, attack rate, right, of uh, eighty-five percent of individuals actually attend uh, COVID nineteen on the ship. And you can see among those six positive uh, binding antibodies, only three of them actually, you know, uh, were protected from reinfection. And guess what? These three of them actually are all positive for neutralizing antibodies. Those individuals had positive amount of binding antibodies, but negative amount of neutralizing antibodies are getting reinfection. So I think the paper actually con um, concluded that the presence of neutralizing antibodies from a prior infection can be significantly associated with protection uh, against reinfection. So we are seeing more and more reports, right, data, right, and showing that people after uh, infection or after vaccination are still getting uh, infection. So uh, feel free to open this uh, news link uh, after the talk, and it, that does mention, you know, multiple uh, instances of uh, reinfection or infection after even vaccination. And uh, this is a very good summary of you know seven different uh, uh, vaccine um, clinical trials, right? So among them, you can see uh, it include data from Moderna, Novavax, Pfizer, Sputnik, uh, AstraZeneca, J Johnson and Johnson, Sinovac, and uh, as you can see, different vaccine platforms that induce a different uh, uh, you know uh, signal of neutralizing antibodies. And uh, as you can uh, indicate that the higher amount of neutralizing antibodies are actually very much correlated with a protective efficacy. Uh, so the summary goes, uh, neutralization level is highly predictive of immune protection. And uh, don't be you know, just content after your vaccination because unfortunately, the decay of neutralizing titers in vaccine uh, subjects over three to four months time after vaccination was still as rapid as those uh, seen in the convalescent subjects. So the immunity that you obtain from either an infection or vaccination can still decrease after a certain period of time. So do watch out you know, how your own decay profile are look like and uh, be prepared for your own you know, protective measures if the neutralizing antibodies are declining over a period of time. And oftentimes you see uh, most vaccines are, are declaring, uh, they are only safe you know, for six months, but uh, just look out for your own um, profile because uh, as we say uh, in the previous slide, there are people who have very persistent level of neutralizing antibodies. And if you are sitting in that uh, cohort group, right, then I mean, um, 
probably you don't need to go through uh, another level of uh, you know anxiety of uh, absence of uh, immune protection. So with our kit in uh, development, we're actually increasing new features and making the uh, testing more and more accessible. So in this graph, you can see that uh, we can allow a rapid finger prick um, sampling method by using the peripheral blood. Uh, and you can see the concordance level by collecting a wire a finger prick method versus the traditional venous blood is actually as high as 100% concordance for all the positive and negative uh, sample. And uh, recently, if you are following the news, as I mentioned, right, uh, the Sinopharm uh, coronavirus uh, vaccine is actually indicating may have a need to uh, allow booster, a third um, dose booster. But this is probably like, applicable for a small number of people. Um, and also, same uh, as the Sinopharm group executive also indicate that uh, they are looking at uh, the uh, possibility of adding a booster shot. Uh, so neutralizing antibodies can be that one biomarker analysis to identify who may have a booster shot in need. Um, why neutralizing antibodies are needed for um, post-vaccine monitoring program? As you can see that uh, neutralizing antibodies are the functional biomarker for protection, right? Um, this is the only method that can be applied for uh, most of the diagnostic labs. And um, as many of my slides indicate, right, the binding antibody does not equal to neutralizing antibody. Uh, SVNT is highly concordant with the gold standard live virus assay. And uh, the longevity between binding antibodies is also not equal to neutralizing antibody. What's more, as you can see the guideline from WHO, they actually reserve the IU, International Unit for Neutralizing Antibodies, only for neutralizing antibody methods and assays. So CPAS will soon uh, have uh, you know, a, a way to report in IU, and all other binding antibodies can only report BAU, binding antibody unit. Uh, last, I mean, the, uh, is also indicating the uh, SVNT still remain the only FDA UA kit to determine neutralizing antibody and we are getting adopted by many of the global vaccine trials uh, to make evaluating neutralizing antibody available for the general um, studies or the general public needs. There are a lot of independent publications indicating the performance is actually, you know, uh, as accepted by the scientific community and also the authority for regulatory approvals. So the potential application of SVNT technology can be many different aspects, right? Uh, today, I'm focusing on the use case for vaccine efficacy evaluation. It can be also used, especially in India, as we have a high prevalence of infection, to, to look at individuals who may already have a pre-vaccine neutralizing antibody presence, and they can be treated differently, right, if they are kind of, um, after consulting to a doctor. As the Sinopharm vaccine is actually indicating a booster, um, a uh, shot may be required, a new SVNT can actually identify who may need a booster shot. Uh, not to mention as uh, VNT can use to uh, evaluate the infection history, convalescent plasma therapy, and herd immunity, immunity longevity. And last but not least, right, for capturing the origin of SARS-CoV-2 and forecast and prevent the next outbreak is a global mission that WHO and many organizations are on the uh, cover, right, to actually allow, uh, you know, uh, more predictability and also less um, disruption to the economy and our daily life. So with that, I just wanted to uh, close the talk on the surrogate virus neutralization test principle, uh, saying that vaccination passport is actually being under the hot topic. A uh, vaccine passport may not equal to protection, right, or prevent of infection or transmission. So as Qantas indicates, people will have to get vaccinated to be able to board a plane and enter another country. I think we are wanted to really go um, in this direction to make CPAS, the SVNT technology, a gold standard to evaluate the immunity of individuals after the vaccine. 
And then I wanted to cover a little bit on the IVD kit that we have, uh, you know, uh, introduced. And as I mentioned in the previous slide, we still remain and proud to be the only neutralization antibody test uh, by approved by FDA EUA. And uh, we have launched our kit very early in 2020 in Singapore, and uh, it can be used to detect prior infection and also effective uh, vaccination. Our concordance of uh, you know data to the live virus as as a gold standard is hundred percent uh, for positive and also negative evaluation. So with that, I really appreciate your time and uh, patience in walking through me with this you know uh, uh, amazing journey of uh, our CPAS development. Uh, I will be standing by for any questions. And now I pass the uh, microphone and the floor to Dr. Shala. Uh, over to you, Dr. Shala. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lee. And uh... yeah, thank you, Dr. Lee. Uh, dear participant, uh, let me introduce you, uh, Dr. Shalab. So, Dr. Shalab is the you know, head and uh, head of uh, Dr. Lalpat's uh, division for uh, uh, microbiology and the serology division. And he has a immense experience in uh, clinical microbiology. And he is an authorized technical supervisor for the College of American Pathologists. And it is an honor to invite you, sir, for this uh, session. Uh, participants, Dr. Uh, Malik will be you know, touching upon the implementation of the ongoing COVID vaccination in India and the re relevance of neutralizing antibody in a post vaccination survey and his experience in you know utilizing or screening neutralizing antibody in the population so over to you uh, thank you dr mani for the kind introduction so i will be basically highlighting uh, how you need to uh, differentiate uh, between the available test that is the binding antibodies and neutralizing and how you can use it in the different scenarios so uh, there are many questions in our mind regarding the significance of neutralizing antibody, which uh, of course Dr. Lee has tried to address all the arenas of uh, whether it is plasma donation or vaccine efficacy or uh, herd immunity, etc. But still uh, there is confusion uh, in our mind that uh, what uh, additional information we are getting uh, through neutralizing which is missing in the available IgG test in India or total antibody test which are available against the spike proteins or nucleocapsid protein, etc. And uh, coming to IgM, uh, it is not uh, available in India as uh, no guideline or uh, uh, their uh, role is defined by ICMR in Indian state. So how accurate are these tests, how this test will work, and how you will use uh, the data uh, for implementation of vaccine or clinical therapeutics and herd immunity, we will see. So uh, this is the latest uh, publication in the month of March, which I have retrieved from the uh, JAMA, that is uh, neutralizing antibodies against SARS-CoV-2 variants after infection and vaccination. And uh, the study has taken into account uh, the four SARS variants, that is B1, B117, and N501Y, and especially the UK variant, that is 117, has been covered. So what they found that as an additional variant MR, neutralizing antibody response after infection and vaccination should be monitored. Limitation was uh, about the small sample size. And uh, the neutralization study measures the ability of antibodies to block the viruses. And these results suggest that infection and vaccine-induced immunity was retained in the especially B117 variant, which was rampant and is still rampant in the Indian territory, that is the uh, UK variant. So uh, false positivity is the question, how long this antibody will stay? Again, uh, nobody has uh, clearly defined it. Some papers say it is six months, some are saying three months. And uh, are all antibodies 
conferring protection on us are they really efficacious in blocking the virus is uh, still a question mark with the available test which of course the neutralizing antibody test has been able to fill this gap successfully so uh, this is again the same scenario different tests were done and still uh, confusion was there uh, what is my uh, protection level and how efficacious they are so definitely all antibodies are not equal and different antibodies will provide different information and neutralizing antibodies as the dr lee has rightly said it tells you about the functional immunity with the various application in the domain of vaccines therapeutics suppose you are developing some antiviral drug or any molecule and you want to check whether the uh, ace2 receptor has been correctly blocked or not so there also it will be helpful in monitoring and again it has got a supplementary role of diagnostics also of course uh, we are not uh, promoting the test uh, as per icmr for the diagnostic purposes so uh, the intent is mainly to study what happened after the infection uh, about the efficiency of the antibodies and what happens after the vaccination so uh, before we proceed further once again a quick uh, uh, revision uh, how the binding antibodies and how the neutralizing antibody will differ so when i talk about the currently available test uh, most of them are engineered against the spike proteins or against the nucleocapsid and since most of the vaccines are taking into account the spike proteins Uh, the entire code has been uh, created as per the spike protein so we should use the test specially when it comes to the post vaccination where spike proteins are involved now in spike also uh, the molecule is very big as you can see on the screen this is a very big molecule of entire spike protein and it is actually the center portion that is the rbd receptor binding domain which is going to react with the ace2 receptor now what as you are seeing on the screen what is happening the antibodies are pre present in the system and they can attach anywhere so that does not mean that they are neutralizing they are having neutralizing ability so the red one on the screen you are seeing is the neutralizing one and the blue ones are non neutralizing but when you will get the report the antibodies are detected but you don't know whether they are effectively neutralizing or not so that is why the need for neutralizing was felt so uh, understanding the neutralizing antibody further this diagram is very very important now this is the structure of the virus these mushroom like things are the spike protein see how big is this entire molecule okay and when i talk about the neutralizing antibody i mean this portion which antibody is blocking only this portion because ultimately this is going to react with the ace2 receptor so uh, let us look at the other antibody it can attach anywhere now for example non neutralizing antibody it is uh, attaching on the drumstick part of it and one portion is just attaching at the top of it so non neutralizing will attach anywhere on this entire molecule and in neutralizing we are just talking about this area and what we have done we have purified this portion we have totally removed this the rest of the portion so that the test becomes highly specific so this ensures the good positive predictive value as well as good negative predictive value so this is uh, if you have understood this much you will Uh, easily grasp uh, what is the uh, net difference between the binding antibody and the neutralizing antibody so this uh, slide i have taken from the who and further again this is from the latest uh, issue or uh, who reference which talks about the antibody response to the sars cov2 so most patients who recover from uh, the infection or undergo vaccination they will have antibodies and most of the subjects will develop between 1 to 3 weeks time 
so if you attempt the activity in the first week the success rate will be around 50% and as the days proceeds especially in the third week the um, uh, catching rate will uh, touch around 95 or above patients who have more severe disease appear to have higher level of neutralizing antibodies and also uh, the person who has undergone the infection as well as the vaccination you see a more impact on this segment so while patients who have mild or asymptomatic covid 19 have a lower level of neutralizing antibodies several studies show that antibody remain for several months in individual who tested positive for example a study of more than 30000 individual from mild to moderate covid 19 found that neutralizing titer persisted for at least 5 months so this is again i have taken from the who reference so uh, so far uh, the story is young the vaccination these are the early days we have yet to uh, collect the data and analyze it fully so uh, this is the uh, about the longevity this is the comment from the uh, who reference now coming to the variants and the reinfection uh, well changes in the virus genomic sequences called mutation can make prior immunity less effective especially that has been our observation when it was when we talk about the h1n1 or influenza viruses recently several sars-cov-2 variants have emerged and that involved genetic mutations of the spike protein so uh, uh, till the time this test was launched already uh, the manufacturer had taken into account the various uh, genotypes various variants also and uh, they had the opportunity to to, to test the uh, respective serum of these variants and they found a good uh, catching rate in these variants also but uh, if you ask me about the what is happening in the latest double mutant uh, type of variant so so far uh, that data is not available with us but definitely with the coming days uh, this study will also be available so studies are going on to investigate if some of these variants can evade the immune response to a previous sars cov2 infection and make people more vulnerable to reinfection in brazil the studies are going on to determine if a new variant called p1 may lead to more cases of reinfection so this is again under observation and uh, no data is available right now so this is i have taken from journal of clinical microbiology latest issue that is march 2021 a new sars cov2 dual purpose serology test is highly accurate in tracing and uh, analyzing the neutralizing antibody response so they have uh, studied uh, the uh, relationship between the other available binding test or igg based test of different manufacturers and also they uh, studied the relationship with the gold standard available test that is the uh, virus neutralization test or a uh, pseudo virus neutralization test and they found uh, neutralization as test holds good and uh, when i talk about the other available igg test uh, if we talk about the positive predictive value and negative predictive value it is quite high for the uh, neutralizing antibody test as compared to the other available commercial uh, igg based test against the sars cov2 so neutralizing is basically it is uh, blocking the virus uh, from infecting the cell that is the basic uh, definition of this antibodies and generally you uh, will get a good answer if you do the testing in the third week Uh, of the uh, neutralizing ability of the antibodies so uh, again uh, this picture is uh, very important that we have used a highly purified portion uh, that is the rbd in the uh, liquid uh, which is tagged with the hrp2 protein and uh, it it is a two step process 
So first step, we bind uh, the uh, spike uh, uh, proteins with the neutralizing antibody that is the RBD domain. And then this mixture is poured on the ACE2 receptors. So now this is very important. And uh, once again, I would like to emphasize that how this test is a two-step procedure. So first step is picking up the antibodies, neutralizing antibodies, which are tagged with the spatially RBD portion of the uh, spike protein, which is again a filtered out unit. And it is a liquid suspension. So you incubate them together. And the second step is to demonstrate whether there is attachment with the ACE2 receptors, which are coated on the ELISA plate. So second step is missing in most of the binding antibody tests, which though they are talking about the correlation with the neutralizing test. So that is a very fine print you need to understand. And if you look at the uh, intent of the commercial IgG based test against the spike protein, it is very clearly written that it, it means to ascertain the immural immunity. That means the production of antibody has happened or not. So it is not uh, commenting on the neutralizing ability because the second step where we demonstrate whether this mixture was capable of reacting with AS2 receptor is missing in that. So uh, when I talk about the types of neutralization test, of course, uh, they are three. One is the virus neutralization test, which was uh, highlighted by Dr. Lee in her talk. And uh, it is a gold standard test. But uh, there are limitations that you need to conduct the experiment on the live virus. You incubate the patient serum with the live virus. And then you pour this mixture on the uh, cell culture plate and look for the plaque. Uh, formation and plaque reduction, which again requires an expertise and DSL-3 environment. Then uh, second uh, test, which is again based on live virus, a uh, little bit uh, safer than the previous test because here uh, we express the uh, spike proteins in the some other virus, uh, maybe lentivirus, and rest of the procedure remains same. And the limitations are definitely the biosafety levels. Then you need expertise, you need cell cultures, and of course, volumes are not possible. And time is also required along with the cost. You will take two to five days to report this type of testing. So correlation was studied between uh, the virus neutralization test as well as the pseudo virus based neutralization test with the existing uh, uh, c pass -R -C -O -V 2 neutralization antibody test and the good correlation of more than 95% for C. So now we are using this uh, neutralizing antibody test for the uh, detection of efficacious antibodies. So again, this diagram is also very, very important. Now, as I said that uh, we have purified this portion in this test, a highly purified uh, portion that is the RBD region was used. And this was the ACE receptor. So in the first step, we reacted these two and where uh, the neutralizing antibody was present, See how it has caught, and then the, finally, when the mixture was poured in it, and uh, all washing has happened. So, where neutralizing antibodies have uh, uh, totally captured this RBD domain, nothing was available to uh, attach with the ACE2 receptors, which are fixed on this plate. And uh, Again, uh, cross reactivity was also studied with uh, different viruses. So, uh, no cross reactivity was observed with influenza, HCV, ANAs, RSV, uh, other hepatitis virus, except SARS CoV 1, 
but uh, that can also be negated in the given circumstances that uh, uh, you don't hear about the uh, SARS infection uh, these days. So uh, that was the one which had shown the cross reactivity with the, uh, this test. Then uh, coming to the application, uh, definitely it showed good correlation. Most of the PCR positive cases uh, were picked correctly by the neutralizing antibody test. And second application will be in the when you are developing a drug molecule, especially uh, where you are talking about either blocking the H2 receptors or uh, blocking the viruses. So this can be helpful in uh, uh, doing the clinical trial and uh, assessing the how efficacious has been the drug in blocking the H2 receptors. Good agreement with the uh, plaque reduction neutralization assay. So again, helpful in uh, vaccine evaluation. And finally, uh, which person, uh, when I talk about the herd immunity, whether the herd is actually having a efficacious or functional antibodies or not, here also it will uh, comment correctly. So in the coming days, when the standardization has happened and we get a uh, good algorithm from the WHO or CDC and ICMR, that uh, if uh, uh, so much levels of neutralizing antibodies are there, so they will play a crucial role in the immunity certificates also. Because whether it is by infection or whether it is by vaccination, how much is the functional immunity available with you will play a very crucial role in the coming days. So again, uh, this is the repeat of the previous slide uh, about the bi how the binding antibodies. Uh, one more thing I would like to add over here about the commercially available IgG test. So as they are taking into account, most of them uh, are uh, taking into account spike glycoprotein where what they have done, they have uh, used the entire molecule of this. So the methodology offered by them is either ELISA based or chemiluminescence based. So when they uh, stick these uh, spike proteins uh, to the ELISA plate or by, to the magnetic beads, there is uh, some change happening in the molecule also. So that alters the shape. And as a result, what is happening, uh, the antibodies uh, which are getting attached are uh, other than neutralizing antibodies also. Uh, and of course, uh, they will give you the impression that yes, antibodies are positive, but then uh, because of the structural change that is happening, uh, you will attract a lot of non-neutralizing antibodies also. And uh, this uh, totally changes the uh, state uh, when we uh, talk about the uh, neutralizing uh, from the uh, commercially available IgG uh, based test. So as far as my experience is uh, concerned about the neutralizing antibody test, uh, the test is young. It is almost month and uh, 10 days plus uh, ever since we lost at uh, Dr. Lal Path lab. And so far we have uh, studied 200 cases. Uh, positivity was 70%. Uh, so far, the reports uh, we are giving is uh, qualitative in nature. It is uh, answering about the presence or absence of the neutralizing antibody. And uh, this concordance, what I have observed with the other available IgG test on the various platform is to the tune of 10 to 20%. And uh, definitely it is a good answer when I talk about the functional immunity or protective immunity as well as with the vaccine efficacy. Now vaccination, these are the early days and uh, we are uh, yet to analyze uh, how many of these subjects uh, were vaccinated or how many of these subjects were uh, just uh, exposed to the SARS-CoV-2 infection. And uh, in the coming days uh, when the uh, studies are over and we get uh, clear-cut guidelines in the international unit per ml. 
that okay if uh, so and so international units are there uh, you are protected you need not go for vaccination or even after vaccination like in case of hepatitis b antibody test where we say that uh, 10 international units should be there to um, uh, ascertain uh, whether you need to go for further booster dose or not so such type of data is awaited and uh, will play a very very important role in the coming days and lastly uh, in the plasma donation also all of us have seen previously that uh, though antibodies were there and they were uh, uh, given also to the sufferer but uh, no uh, success was achieved so this is because uh, we were just talking about the levels of antibodies the functionality of antibodies was missing which is now possible to ascertain with the neutralizing antibody that uh, uh, the so and so subject which you have subject, selected for the plasma donation is now carrying the neutralizing antibody and uh, definitely this will uh, reduce the caveat in the failure after the plasma donation so this is from my side uh, as far as the test is concerned the uh, test name is s290 uh, which we have started uh, almost a month ago and uh, serum is the requirement and uh, it is shipped refrigerated this is the report format from our side which talks about the negative and the positive value so uh, as far as quantitative nature of the test is concerned it is a recent development and definitely we will also evaluate for the and see uh, how it can be uh, added and uh, launched in the next level so thank you for patiently listening to me and these are our contact details thank you over to dr manina thanks a lot dr shalab so you know it was you no know, uh, well explained and you know you build up the whole scenario of how the kit is how the virus is how the you know different kind of antigens are available in a virus and what needs to be detected what not to be detected so that was a fantastic enlightenment for us and for my, i think most of the audience also would have been you know, learned a lot from you thank you yeah so let's go to the uh, question answer session now uh, we have few questions from the audience in both uh, qss part and also in chat i'll go through the questions and let's try to answer how much as possible with the time limit so there is a question like is there a possibility that the binding antibodies generated after a classical you know sars cov2 infection cross react with the variant viruses which might lead to uh, ade phenomenon enhancing the chances of severe covid-19 so yes, uh, yeah, yes sir yes uh, uh, like in dengue this is a well known fact uh, uh, when you get the second time sometimes the already existing antibody they play a role of enhancer so this has been seen but so far uh, uh, no studies have come to light as far as sars cov2 infection is concerned so we have yet to see the antibody uh, based enhancement of the disease or vaccine uh, based enhancement of the disease is yet to come to light so, so far i am not aware of any development on these lines <clears throat> so was the same experience happened in sars cov1 sars uh, but uh, where was the vaccine uh, okay. vaccine based enhancement i i don't think again no documentation is there okay but uh, there are talks about the earlier sars uh, where they have seen uh, that antibodies are uh, available in some of the subject uh, right up to this, this date also right so uh, that much information is there thanks thanks a lot sir I think next question. I think Yang Fan can take that up. You know, what is what is the role of binding antibodies and what what is used as a surrogate particle? I think they are asking about the kit. 
as a since we mentioned as a surrogate virus mutation as a yeah so basically uh the many um and uh, the audience the binding antibodies are ready to see uh in your immune system when you encounter any pathogens right your immune cells will get quickly activated they form you know germinal center b cells plasma cells and mammary cells so the plasma cells are you know are having a role to introduce the any sort of an antibodies right so though it includes uh, a mixture of binding antibodies igg iga igm and a small subset is actually having a functional role and this will actually be the neutralizing antibodies and in the case of such uh, the, our sbnt technology so as uh, you can see that we really make use of the uh, rbd and se2 interaction so if you were to ask what is the antigen for our neutralizing antibodies that is being detected in SVNT technology, uh, it's definitely targeting uh, RBD domain of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Thanks, thanks a lot. But I think the next question is uh, basically for uh, to differentiating the available IgG and IgM kit, basically what the audience has asked us uh is there any clear demarcation in the kits whether they have provided in which against which antigen is the kit is designed for or which uh, isotype is designed for yeah most of the uh, igg based assays because in india as you are aware igm is not at all used and offered yes. and no guidelines are available and uh, once again, especially for SARS, uh, uh, the purpose of these kits, IgG, has been zero surveillance for uh, to ascertain how many uh, persons are carrying this type of antibodies. Not at all diagnostic uh, value of this has been taken into account. Mm -hmm. Although the uh, Infectious Disease Society American guideline is very clear on this, where uh, they have come out with the cases uh, where clinically you are suspecting it is a SARS infection and uh, of course uh, maybe two weeks have elapsed or uh, more than 12 days have elapsed and you carried out the PCR you did not get any answer but if you uh, do the serological test IgG or IgM etc you get it a positive so it has got a diagnostic value also but yeah. in Indian subcontinent uh, as far as diagnostic chapter or or diagnostic application of this test is concerned is totally bad. So it is uh, not at all taken into account. Now, uh, most of these IgG kits are spike protein based. And as I showed you in my presentation that look at the molecule, how the spike protein looks like a mushroom. And uh, all these kits, the majority of them, they are taking into account the full molecule of the spike protein. Now, actually, it is the uh, receptor binding domain, which is the critical portion, which is going to attach with the ACE2 receptor. And uh, these assays, all the commercial assays, they are answering just first part of it. That is, okay, uh, our magnetic beads or our plates were coated with the spike protein and we put the serum. If antibodies were there, they will sit on it and the next step will detect it. Now, what about the second part of it? Uh, was this uh, good enough to uh, block the ACE2 receptors or was it uh, uh, capable of uh, reacting with the ACE2 receptors that is missing? And uh, therefore, the intent of the available IgG test is that, okay, the exposure to SARS had happened and you have developed these antibodies. Then next they uh, say that, uh, okay, we have uh, done the studies. We have studied the correlation with these tests, the neutralizing tests. Yes, yes. And uh, it was around 90%. Some of the kids claim 90%, some claim 80%, some claim 92%. And uh, I'm very sorry to say, if you look at the uh, uh, study subjects, it is very low. And... Uh, in this low subject, if you are missing uh, uh, so much of the functionality, then uh, how uh, you will be able to tell the efficacious 
nature of uh, these antibodies so that is where this uh, uh, binding test or uh, the other available commercial igg dose test lag with the neutralizing antibody test is able to tell the other thing uh, why uh, it is not uh, gaining much of a prominence i think in the indian territory it is cost is the factor for this yeah which is uh, uh, preventing it otherwise uh, it gives you both the answers of not only the presence of a antibody uh, and also about the uh, neutralizing capability because you are demonstrating the attachment with the ace to receptor it is not at all happening in the case of neutralizing antibody presence so right. this is my take on this fantastic sir i think you have you no know, clearly explained what is the difference of the other commercial and the c pass and which is important to detect right. <clears throat> yeah i think i wanted to add one sentence to uh, dr shalas uh, context of you know other binding antibodies showing a correlation right not only the sample size but also uh, the study design per particular right so basically in a study design that is where you know uh, characterized you can select time points that uh, were supposed to show a higher correlation however in our clinical diagnostic uh, context your patients and each of us actually coming from a very unique and different background. I may be having an infection today, maybe it was happening yesterday. In the clinical trial design, right, you can specify how many days after you'll be collecting that sample to show a correlation, but that's not going to be controlled in the clinical sample context. Um, okay. Yeah, thanks. Well, well said, correct. I think the next question is also towards you because when we generate a report, uh, many of the IgG tests or other things, they give some values. So right. some patients, they are totally not aware of what are the values and whether it is positive or negative. Can you just give some light on that? So uh, now uh, when I talk about the IgG-based test, of course, uh, quantitative tests are not available and values are coming. But uh, then uh, no guidelines are available from the WHO or CDC, which uh, demarcates the level. Okay, okay now uh, let's say level is 100, so you are immunized or uh, it's 200, you no need to go for vaccine or something like that. So those levels are yet to be standardized. Uh, in neutralizing, right now we are uh, we have taken the cutoff barrier of 30%. So it has to cross the 30% before uh, we uh, comment on the positivity or negativity. And uh, as uh, Dr. Lee has also shown that uh, quantification has happened in uh, neutralizing also. But again, I will appreciate if we get a clear-cut levels well-defined by the, by the authorities, which will uh, talk about the uh, levels for the immunity, levels for the vaccine efficacy, and so on. Thanks. Next question it is for you, M. Uh, like what is the correlation between the PVNT like and SVNT, like PRNT assay versus SVNT. Thank you, uh, Dr. Manu. Yeah. I've shared in uh, the slide deck uh, of R square of 0 0.95 between SVNT versus PRNT, the last virus assay, right? So if, uh, as Dr. Shala has indicated in his presentation and uh, in the Nature Biotech paper that Paul Juan Lin Fa has uh, uh, published, it also shows the correlation between SVNT versus uh, pseudovirus PVNT. Uh, there is definitely a strong correlation. Uh, it's similar to what we have seen between SVNT versus uh, the BNT, PRNT method. Right. And does it more uh, be relevant if you talk about CPAS, which we see as a surrogate viral nucleation assay? So there are some kind of real confusion in the masses also, like this is yet another serology assay. So it is better to talk about this as a surrogate assay for the conventional viral nucleation assay, which cannot be done in a, any lab facility. Yes. Uh, uh, 
this has been developed and uh, as we already discussed both of us have discussed mm -hmm. in the presentation that uh, since the gold standard test uh, where uh, in a very simple words you incubate the live coronavirus with the patient serum and then this mixture is poured on the cell culture plate special to look for the plaque reduction so that is not only dangerous and uh, involves biosafety levels but also it takes time as well as cost it, it will take one case to report uh, somewhere around 3 to 5 days and the gap has been filled by this test where uh, they have done both the things they have purified the critical component that is the rbd domain reacted it with the serum in the first step and if neutralizing antibodies are there it binds the rbd and this mixture when it is poured on the ace2 cells nothing is available to react with the ace2 cells so uh, blocking as well as the attachment with the ace2 has been successfully demonstrated and uh, since the entire exercise has been uh, carried out in a kit format Uh, which is a uh, totally on the lines of a gold standard test so that is why we call it a pseudo uh, virus neutralization test and uh, the correlation uh, to the tune of more than 95% is there in, in the both the techniques and the beauty is the biosafety level comes down and it is easy to do you get a quick answer in one and a half hour time and you can uh, do almost uh, 90 95 test in that one one and a half hour which is not possible with the uh, gold standard available test because uh, especially in india where again the bsl3 based virology labs are also limited all right thanks sir i think one more question is from uh, sort of common question i believe uh, what is the role of binding antibodies basically and why we need to check or it is not necessary just directly go for a neutralizing antibody well uh, one can directly go for the neutralizing as i said i think at the moment cost is the deterrent mm -hmm. and uh, binding antibody is a, just a rough estimate about the two things that okay uh, you have undergone the covid infection and look uh, you have not developed the antibody against it but uh, if you want to uh, further break up and see whether you have a efficacious antibodies or just uh, like that they are there so then you will have to uh, get the neutralizing antibody test done right. and uh, especially it will become more uh, relevant when we will come out with a clear figures in the international unit for ml Uh, which will clearly say okay if the person is having uh, this ma this many international units of uh, inter uh, neutralizing antibody in the blood he is to he is safe to travel anywhere in the world uh, he may need not undergo vaccination so the moment uh, this type of guidelines will emerge you will see this uh, test will gain lot of prominence sure sir sure thanks a lot i think jamscript is working in that line i believe yeah Yeah. Yes, for sure. Yes. Oh, update uh, you all. Once we have, you know, we have already done some um uh, very interesting work. Um, you know, when we wanted to correlate between the uh, guidelines on covalent plasma treatment, right? So as you can see, uh, FDA actually clearly indicated one in one sixty or one in three twenty is a high titer for people to donate the blood to actually save other people's life, right? So as we go along this line, it means that if you after infection or after vaccination can achieve a titer level of one in one sixty, that would be fantastic. So our data have already been approved by FDA EUA, ah,、uh, to indicate the level of neutralizing antibodies that is equivalent to this one in one sixty, and that is a magic number of sixty eight percent. So I think, ah,、uh, as Dr. Shala mentioned, we will be happy to re release the IU. Uh, eventually, and、uh, you know, once the IU can be、uh, you know available, declared by、uh, CDC, FDA, and WHO, that is really when the magic can happen, and our method can be really、uh, very much broadly、uh, available and、uh, traction. 
so if this happens then it will be just similar to hepatitis b like right. how all of us uh, test our employees for the antibodies against hepatitis b and look for the figure of 10 That's so true. those who are uh, below 10 uh, they undergo it so something like that will happen in corona also hopefully and uh, then this uh, testing will make lot of impact next question is like uh, for again for young fan uh, we described about the monoclonal antibodies for therapeutics right so okay. in that line uh, the audience one of the audience has asked how neutralizing antibodies different from monoclonal antibody mm-hmm. and is it applicable to all variants of covid-19 like the current covids so a neutralizing antibody can be a mixture right so basically our immune system is multifaceted uh, response when we encounter right uh, the b cells actually can quickly develop into activated b cells and activated b cells will undergo a level of stringent criteria under selection only those antibody producing b cells that are producing you know important antibodies uh, for example can be neutralizing antibodies can be some of igg ign producing cells can alive right so this people uh, this people are uh, these cells that you know uh, produce certain antibodies uh, can be maintained at a longer time so basically the neutralizing antibody is just a pool of all these different uh, antibodies that you know it can be thousands of different neutralizing antibodies in your immune system after vaccine or neutralizing you know after infection experience so the monoclonal antibodies that we mentioned in the talk uh, which also receive FDA approval is basically a purified monoclonal antibodies that can be found either you know in somebody's blood that this somebody is actually a very good uh, convalescent uh, uh, covid-19 survivor or it can be generated in you know the uh, immune response in different animals and eventually this neutralizing antibodies got humanized and then it was further developed as a therapeutics so this monoclonal uh, antibodies uh, by right it has to be a neutralizing antibody for it to gain traction and getting fda eu approval and our immune system are just able to do so that's why the focus of the global com- uh, combat against uh, covid-19 the general you know 90% of population are getting through vaccine we are not going to receive a neutralizing antibody treatment the treatment is meant for a small subset of people whose immune systems are actually compromised or the elderly who actually do, do not have a readily b cell response that can be triggered by a vaccine so different purposes different you know cohort groups actually will receive a different uh, um regimen and uh, i think as we all see vaccine is still being in demand Uh, that the general public uh, receiving as we are still healthy and our immune system luckily are still producing neutralizing antibodies that we can detect in svnt technology yeah thanks a lot thanks a lot uh, you know keeping in mind of the time just have two minutes to end the session just one final question based upon two different question that from the audience uh, like how are the neutralizing antibody response globally uh, whether it is infected uh, developed or with the based upon post vaccination um so so far svnt has been adopted by many countries um post infection post vaccination uh, we actually getting a lot of you know use cases in us europe um brazil you know south africa uh, of course uh, asian uh, well actually the majority of the uh, listeners are actually you know sitting in the asian context Uh, basically so far right as uh, some of the audience also uh, rightfully indicated that we all have different genetic background as individuals and as each of us as individuals the virus as individual particles are also keep evolving right so there are a lot of mutations that happening but majority of these mutations are still you know ma- not making a huge difference to the virus um, structures so that's why so far our svnt technology cpas kit are still uh, very strong 
in detecting different virus backgrounds. Uh, for example, it can be a UK virus that uh, I didn't show the data due to the time limitation today. Uh, but we are still very strong in detecting uh, you know, the neutralization capacity of, uh, of a neutralizing antibody induced in our immune system to the UK variants. There is a small uh, reduction in the neutralization capacity against South Africa variant, uh, probably some of uh, detection also uh, against the Brazil variant. So we are in the process of you know, uh, updating or optimizing our CPAS technology so that will make it relevant when more of these variants of concerns getting dominance in uh, India, in other countries, then we have a new technology to address that uh, concern. Uh, so far, the data looks very promising. I really hope that you, know, you guys can actually have uh, the pleasure of us coming back again to this forum to continue this discussion. Well, that will be great, great Ardan, for, you know, for the recent scenario of a lot of mutations happening, new viruses are coming, and everyone have the same doubts whether this can detect that, that, that can detect this. So that will be great add on. Thanks, thanks a lot. Sir. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, thanks, Dr. Uh, no, Shalab and Dr. Yang Fan, you know, to enlightening us and sharing your experience about the global experience also and Indian experience also, like how the what are the test modalities that are available and how the technology works and how CPAS works and how CPAS is totally different from other commercial assays. I think audience, uh, you would have enjoyed the uh, session with us. I, and thanks for everyone to join and take your time from your routine work. Thanks a lot. Be safe. Have a good day. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Keep safe. You. Thanks a lot. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Mm. I think the session went well. Okay. I think the session went well. There were a lot. Facebook live stop. I think it's still. Yeah.